The Story of the Godfrey Family During the early 1800s, the U.S. government sent several expeditions to explore the new Louisiana Purchase area east of the Mississippi River. One of these expeditions led to the founding of Fort Snelling in 1818. In 1837, treaties were signed with the Dakota and Ojibwe people to open up land on the east side of St. Anthony Falls, which led to the founding of the village of St. Anthony. Many eager settlers moved to the area because of the abundance of land and the opportunities for starting a farm or business. One of these settlers was Franklin Steele, a sutler who ran a small general store at Fort Snelling. He was the first settler to stake a claim at the Falls of St. Anthony, just upriver from Fort Snelling. Mr. Steele envisioned the falls as a source of power to drive a sawmill. This was needed to produce all of the lumber for the new settlers coming to the area. Back east, he knew a millwright who could build efficient water-powered sawmills. That man was Ard Godfrey. In 1847, Mr. Steele convinced Mr. Godfrey, a 34-year-old millwright, to leave Orono, Maine, and move to the new village of St. Anthony to build a dam and sawmill for his business. Ard Godfrey came alone in the fall of 1847 with a plan that his wife Harriet and their children would follow later. At the time, Harriet was 31 years old. Ard worked hard supervising the construction of the dam and mill over several months. In the spring of 1848, they were completed and the lumber mill was the first business in St. Anthony. Ard began building a house for his family in the summer of 1848. Once the basic structure was complete, Ard returned to Maine to bring his family to their home. Just before the family was about to start their long journey to St. Anthony, their youngest daughter became seriously ill and died. The family was not able to leave until late fall. They took a train from Maine to Buffalo, New York. The family traveled with Captain John Rollins on a schooner boat down the Grand Island River to the Erie Canal at Lake Huron. They continued to Cleveland via Lake Erie and to Detroit via the Detroit River. They made their way across Lake Michigan to Sheboygan, Wisconsin. The winter was particularly harsh, and they had to stop in Beloit, Wisconsin to stay with Ard's sister and the Alex Gordon family. They were going to take a steamboat from Galena, Illinois, up the Mississippi River, but the last boat of the season had already left. Mrs. Godfrey was pregnant, and Ard had to return to St. Anthony to his job and to continue work on the house, while Harriet and the children remained in Wisconsin until spring. At the time, Helen was nine years old and Abner was five. Mr. Godfrey and Captain Rollins rode back to St. Anthony on horseback along the Mississippi River, which was difficult during the harsh winter months. Mrs. Godfrey was pregnant and could not travel on horseback during this time. In the spring, Alex Gordon, Mrs. Godfrey, and the Godfrey children took the first riverboat from Galena to St. Paul and met Mr. Godfrey and Captain Rollins there. They arrived in April 1849. They settled in just in time to welcome their daughter Harriet, nicknamed Hattie, into the world on May 30, 1849. Ard stayed busy finishing the Godfrey house, which was not completed until after the family had moved in. The house is an example of the Greek Revival style, which was popular on the eastern seaboard during this time. To remind them of their home in Maine, they painted their home yellow, like fresh-cut Maine pine. In addition to raising the children, cooking, and cleaning, Mrs. Godfrey kept busy entertaining visitors and other settlers. The house was used for church meetings, sewing groups, and social gatherings. The organization of the Cataract Masonic Lodge, the first in Minnesota, took place in the Godfrey Parlor. Mr. Godfrey served as the treasurer, and Mrs. Godfrey served as the tiler, a position sometimes called the outer guard. Her duty was to stay outside the door and ensure that only those who are duly qualified can enter the lodge room. Many meetings like this occurred in the Godfrey House, and prominent people such as governors were entertained there. Meanwhile, 
the town of St. Anthony was growing fast. By the end of 1848, there were 300 residents. By 1855, that number had grown to 3,000. Daily life could be difficult, but there were opportunities for fun in the town. Candy poles and parties were organized for younger children, and social gatherings for teenagers and adults. The town's first social society was set up in 1849, with many meetings taking place in the Godfrey House. A school teacher came to town and opened the first school in St. Anthony. The Godfrey's nearest neighbors opened the town's first general store, and the St. Charles Hotel was built in 1850, which included a ballroom that became the new social center of the town. The Godfreys had another daughter, Martha Ann, in 1851. In 1853, Ard moved to Minnehaha Falls, where he owned 160 acres. He built a new sawmill at the mouth of the creek and a new home for his family. After the Godfreys left St. Anthony, the house was occupied by several families until June 1905, when the Hennepin County Territorial Pioneers Association purchased the house and donated it to the city of Minneapolis to preserve this important piece of St. Anthony's history. You can learn more about the Godfrey family and house through an in-person tour. The Godfrey House is open to the public on Saturdays and Sundays in June, July, and August. For the most current information, please visit the website of the Women's Club of Minneapolis.